Don't get excited, even though it's, uh, what, a couple hundred million dollars uh, over forecast, maybe a little more than that, uh, for the year. Uh, there's an anomaly in there that we talked about back in April, uh, a huge bump in uh, income tax because of federal tax changes. Uh, it's a good report. I'm happy. Uh, but. There's an anomaly in there that uh, will have to be corrected next year because people, in anticipation of the federal tax increases, uh, paid uh, certain amounts of money out before the first of the year that showed up this year in April. Uh, so uh, just be cognizant of that. What type of options does a couple extra hundred million dollars give? Well, it's certainly, it's certainly, you know, I mean, again, that's, it, it, there's two, two things to consider. One, how much of that is real? which will be in a base going forward for ongoing revenue next year. The part of it that was the one-time anomaly, we wouldn't count. Uh, but uh, a portion of it uh, you can count on, and we'll be guided by uh, watching that as we uh, follow the forecast for fiscal 14. And sometimes you make adjustments on those. Uh, the other part uh, that's uh, captured in effect as surplus money creates additional uh, capital uh, projects for uh, one-time expenditures, whatever those cap, or for uh, putting back for rainy day purposes. For example, we use some rainy day money uh, for scholarship issues. Uh, that's where that money comes from, uh, savings that amount to uh, one-time savings. Uh, but the, uh, all of this creates potential options to solve some of those problems going forward. We'll have to wait and see, but we'll be back in February with a, with a budget session. And uh, this is good news, potentially good news. And so if it, to the extent that it's not uh, a one-time anomaly, it may create additional funding uh, for such things as those scholarships that we had to do with one-time money this time, potentially. Some, some, some folks invariably will argue that uh, your forecast was too low, that yeah, uh, you, the state could have afforded more in tax cuts in the <laughs> session. What do you say to those folks? I'd say they ought to be conservatives. <laughs> you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> I mean, I'm a conservative when it comes to money. Uh, yeah, I conservatively budget. Uh, it's much easier to underpromise and overdeliver. It's much easier to conservatively budget. It's much easier to have uh, some money uh, put back for a rainy day than it is to be a liberal budget person and just want to uh, project liberal projections and then wake up and find out, oh my gosh, I either spent too much money or I cut too much in the way of taxes and now we're in a hole like all these other states. The reason Arkansas was one of only four states that never got in trouble is this very conservative budget model that, uh, that I uh, believe in. Is there any chance you would use any of your rating day funds to provide additional resources to DCC? Well, no, you, one of the things for DCC, if you'll notice, is they got a big increase starting uh, first of this week. This was planned in the budget. Their general revenue went up. Do they need more? Well, they're going to hire a whole bunch more folks based upon what was already being done to begin with. Okay. I mean, you know, this was contemplated. Do you remember, Richard, what the, uh, what the amount was on the... Uh, no, but, I mean, did, we increased GR, did we not, for uh, DCC? Yeah, in regular increased GR. And my recollection is that we, ha and I don't, don't hold me to this, and try, you can go check it out, we can try to get you the information, but there were a substantial number of increased uh, uh, parole officers uh, that uh, were going to be uh, hired in conjunction with this, the bulk of which are coming to Pulaski County. Now, there's several that are going down for a new program in South Arkansas around El Dorado, but the bulk of them uh, in Pulaski County, because Pulaski County appears to have a bigger problem in terms of the sheer number of parolees than, than other places. Uh, and you've got other problems. Uh, it's just a fact of life that uh, smaller communities where everybody tends to know more about everybody else uh, creates a greater degree of oversight. For example, if you've got a parolee in, in uh, uh, a rural county in Arkansas that may be well known to law enforcement officials and other folks, uh, they're more likely to know what's going on uh, than uh, in an urban area 
where uh, there's a greater population and everybody doesn't know as much about what everybody's doing. So Pulaski County and other urban areas have additional problems that some rural areas don't have in terms of monitoring. So they need more resources. Sorry. So to answer your question, uh, DCC was already getting increased funding long before this problem with this uh, inmate uh, occurred to be effective one July with this new fiscal So year. are you rolling out at the end of your investigation, no, possibly I, using I, some additional resources? I don't, the, I don't rule out anything uh, that might come from the end of an investigation before the investigation's over. I just give you a chance, though. I know. It's nice of you. <laughs> are, are there, uh, I know, you know, February is a long way off, but do you already have an idea of how other one-time needs that, you know, some surplus money needs to go to? Oh, yeah, yeah, I have some ideas, but, uh, but frankly, uh, those evolve, and we'll, we, we've got to watch and monitor uh, the flow of revenue, uh, as we do every morning. Uh, and then uh, make decisions or alter decisions accordingly. The bottom line here is this is good news, but it's not nearly as good news as the raw numbers would suggest for the reasons I originally stated. We had an anomaly. That anomaly appeared in April where we had a huge increase in state income tax because of federal policies that cause people to pay money out before the first of the year and show up on this tax payment based upon their concern about what the federal government had done in increasing taxes. We talked about that in April. We said don't get too excited about it in April. That's, that's part of the cumulative effect of what you're going to see when you get this report here in a few minutes. Uh, and, and so that has to be factored in. That doesn't negate the fact that I'm happy. Uh, sales tax actually is down uh, for the year, uh, you know, a couple of percent or percent and a half. Uh, uh, from forecast. It's up from last year, but it's down from forecast. And so uh, all that has to be taken into consideration, too. Corporate income tax is down, but we, we never really, corporate income tax is something we don't, I mean, it's so volatile anyway. It's not something that, uh, that we base a lot of uh, happiness or unhappiness uh, with unless it's just hugely out of whack. Uh, but the income tax is what's caused uh, uh, the increase and in a portion of that income tax increase is uh, directly related to the one-time anomaly of uh, what uh, people did prior to the first year in anticipation of those federal tax changes. What does well, the revenue mean? report say about the state of the economy? In your uh, it, uh, the withholding is what I look at. The withholding and sales tax is what I really look at uh, uh, for my own judgment as to the state of the economy. Uh, the Sales tax is relatively flat to forecast, a little below forecast, but is relatively flat. Uh, so that causes me to be cautious. Uh, the withholding is up, uh, which means people are working, which causes me to be optimistic. So you balance your caution about the sales tax numbers with your optimism about the uh, uh, withholding, which means people are working, uh, and you take that into consideration. And then you you temper all that with my own personal philosophy, which DFNA I think really does like. And they may have taught me this 30 years ago. I don't know. It may just be my nature. But I'm conservative about money. And I'd rather underpredict than overpredict. Now, sometimes you don't have any choice. And you don't want to under underpredict too much. You know, we, we uh, adjusted our forecast, if you recall, uh, what, November? Uh, and then again in May, uh, based upon uh, uh, more money coming in than what we had originally uh, predicted. So you try, to be, you try to be honest and precise, but you're honest and precise with a bent toward being conservative. One more in DCC, just your general impression of the last 24 hours, all the changes and rulemaking. Well, uh, obviously I was aware of the rulemaking changes <laughs> ahead of time. Uh, I talked to the chairman uh, at length about some of uh, what they thought needed to be changed and about their prelim about preliminary information that uh, the investigate that at least their investigation was bringing forward uh, so I concur in those uh, changes that the Department of Corrections uh, board has made uh, that you've seen now with regard to uh, mr. Eberhardt and miss sharp uh, uh, you know I've already indicated that uh, uh, I didn't ask mr. Eberhardt to resign uh, and uh, or retire that uh, my investigation isn't complete yet. Uh, 
uh, that the state police is, is performing, and I, and I wouldn't make any decisions until that was done. Apparently, this was his decision, uh, and it, and if uh, I read uh, the media right, uh, he'd been contemplating this for some time. With regard to Ms. Sharp, that's an interim appointment, and obviously, uh, the board makes that appointment, but that person serves at the pleasure of the governor, so the governor will be involved. I have to be involved in, in the ultimate decision in that regard, and. Uh, and we'll look at that and, and see uh, whether or not that's interim or more than interim or there's somebody else. What do you think about her being as an interim? Oh, I, they, they need an interim, and I don't have any quarrel with her being interim. We got to get inside. Are, are you, you looking at any candidates for permanent that, uh, for a permanent I, director that you'd recommend? I, actually, no. Uh, at this point, this is way. This just happened, and so uh, I haven't given any thought. Uh, I'd be open-minded and would listen to. I mean, I look at that board down there and I expect them to do their job, and so I take their recommendations very seriously. All right. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Appreciate it.